If you're an author who self-published your book, odds are you spent a lot of time to write the book, then edit the book, and then go ahead and publish the book. But then once you publish the book, maybe sales just aren't coming in like you thought they would. Maybe you got a couple sales and just nothing ever picked up, or you got a ton of sales right at the start and then they died off completely, or maybe you're just plain struggling to get a single sale. Well, today we're gonna to be talking about the five reasons why no one is buying your book, and we'll be going over some things that you can do to improve your book sales and show up better on Amazon when you're selling your book. My name is Mandy Lynn. I'm an author, book cover designer, and the creator of the Book Launch Planner series. And if you want weekly videos on the business of being an author, then make sure to subscribe and stay tuned. Reason number one that people aren't buying your book is because of the book cover. Let's face it, people do indeed judge a book by its cover. When it comes to your book cover, there's a couple things that you can ask yourself, but the number one thing you wanna ask yourself is does the book cover follow genre trends? This is super, super important. You want your book cover to stand out, but also look like all the other books in that genre as well. It's one of those tricky things that we have to figure out how to balance. It's very tempting as an author, especially a self-published author where you have more control over the book cover, to design the book cover that you like, but the book cover that you like may not necessarily be the book cover that readers will like and that'll make the book sell really well. You also want to make sure that the cover is just plain appealing to the eye. Is it a pretty book cover? Is it kind of ugly? Is it professionally made? Professionally made doesn't mean that you have to spend thousands of dollars on a book cover, but professionally made does mean that the book cover needs to look like it was made by a professional. Whether that professional be someone you hire or maybe you learn book cover design yourself. Now, I personally am a book cover designer. I've worked with hundreds of clients and I've also made a book cover design course. Hello, Mandy from the future to let you know that my book cover design course is actually live now. And it's actually three separate courses. There's a course on Photoshop, a course on typography, and then a course on cover design that covers the photo manipulation side of turning stock photos into book covers. Plus to celebrate the release of these courses and the course bundle, I am doing a cover design kickoff event. For this event, I'll be posting on social media from September 25th through October 27th, really guiding you guys through the course. So if you want accountability as you take all the courses, make sure to join now and follow me on Instagram. Also a part of this kickoff event is that I'm doing four different live streams in the private Facebook group that is for students only. So in these live streams, we'll be going over the course content. I'll be answering any questions you guys have and really just diving into the world of book cover design. So the link down below will be all the courses and the info about the event. I hope to see you guys there. And of course, if you're not someone who's comfortable in graphic design, absolutely go ahead and hire a professional to do your book cover because just trust me, it does matter. Reason number two people may not be buying your book is the book blurb or the description of the book on Amazon. Is the blurb enticing? Does it really sell the story? I want you guys to figure out first an elevator pitch for your book and an elevator pitch is maybe one or two, possibly even three sentences to really sum up the book and sell it. And then I feel like once you have a really good elevator pitch, it's a lot easier to come up with your entire book blurb. At the end of the day, you're focusing on giving the enticing information about the book without giving away the book's ending. You want people to walk away after reading the blurb saying, oh, I need to figure out what happens next. Let me go ahead and buy the book. There's also such thing as giving away too much information in a book blurb. I've definitely read book blurbs that are just way too long, give out too much info, and at the end of it, somehow I'm still like, what's the book about? And there's also been book blurbs that are way too short where the author's afraid to give away too much info, so they just are very vague, and because they're vague, you read the blurb and you're like, what's the book about? I don't get it. Have you ever seen a movie trailer where you watch the trailer and there's a lot going on in the trailer, but then when the trailer ends, you're like, 
so like what's what's the story about that's that's what we want to avoid you want to give enough information to make the book interesting but also take away enough information that people feel compelled to buy the book Reason number three that your book may not be selling well is that the genre isn't clear. Now this goes back to the blurb of the book and the cover of the book because you want your genre to be clear in the book cover and in the blurb as well, but also just Overall, I know many, many authors that, especially for their first book, they are like, oh, my book is sci-fi meets historical meets romance, and it just doesn't always work sometimes to have the genres blurred like that. It makes it very confusing for a reader, especially if they're reading the description and by the end of the description they're not sure what the book is about or what category the book technically fits in. If you as the author don't know an exact category that the book fits in, it's going to be much harder for you to sell the book because if you can't figure out what category it needs to fit in, how are readers supposed to know and booksellers supposed to know where to put the book on the shelf. Now if you want more discussion on why I think having like multiple genres or muddied genres isn't maybe the best idea, I recently did a video where I talk about writing to market and the benefits of writing to market and it's not as bad as some authors think it is. It's not selling your soul to make money off of your book. A lot of it is just understanding the market a little better and understanding reader expectations because when you meet reader expectations you are more likely to sell more books. So if you want to check out that video I will link it down below. Reason number four that your book isn't selling well is the way it's listed on Amazon or whatever book retailer you're selling your book on. But I like to use Amazon as an example because, well, that's where a lot of book sales come from these days. If your book isn't listed correctly or set up correctly on the back end, it's going to be put on the wrong bookshelf. And I know when it comes to online, we don't have physical bookshelves, but things are still categorized like a bookstore. Think of it this way. Say you wrote a romance novel and somehow it ended up being put on the sci-fi shelf at the bookstore. If that's the case, then readers are never going to find your book. Or maybe a couple will find it here and there, but the readers that are romance readers and want to read a romance are never going to think to look in the sci-fi section of the bookstore for your book. So how do we categorize our book correctly on Amazon? Two things come into play. We have the keywords and the categories. This is something you set up on the back end when you're first publishing your book. It's also something that you can modify later down the line, which is a fantastic thing to do, especially as trends change and you might need to adapt your book to those trends. I highly, highly recommend using Publisher Rocket. This is a tool and a piece of software that I personally use to do research on categories and keywords for my books to make sure that my book is categorized correctly and has the best performing keywords so that it shows up in search on Amazon. I cannot recommend this software enough. It's probably my go-to tool when it comes to self-publishing. I actually have an affiliate link at the bottom of this video if you want to check out the software. I also have a YouTube video where I did a tutorial on how I personally use the software to do research on categories and keywords. So that's another video that I will link in the description below this video. Highly recommend checking it out. And reason number five, the biggest reason why your book isn't selling no one's heard of it. How can you sell a book if you're not talking about your book and other readers aren't talking about your book? It's rough as a new author. If you're a debut author, it feels like it's nearly impossible to get your book out there. Trust me, I get it. We've all started from somewhere. The thing is, your book isn't going to magically market itself. You have to do the work. And the work can be a lot of different things. It could be content marketing, which is posting about your book on social media. It could be paid marketing, which is doing stuff like Amazon ads. Or it could be using your newsletter, and there's a bunch of different ways you can use your newsletter and other people's newsletter to sell your book. There are countless 
countless, countless ways to market your book. And my advice to you is to kind of dip your toe in a lot of the different marketing methods and get a feel for what works for you and what works for your book. You don't have to do everything when it comes to marketing, but you do, in my opinion, have to maybe try out everything because you may be surprised what works and you may be surprised by what you enjoy doing as an author. If you want to learn more about book marketing, I have an entire book marketing series. So make sure to check out Marketing for Authors by myself and Bethany Atazada. We wrote a five book series all about marketing. Each book in the series covers a different aspect of marketing. So again, read all the books check it all out, try it all out, and then see what you like most. That is it for this video. If you wanna request future videos, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you've done as an author to help increase book sales for your books on Amazon. Otherwise, I'll see you all next week.